Welcome to The Backstory with Dr. Ricky Singh. This podcast is focused on bringing you the latest research-based information about dramatically improving health, well-being, and quality of life. And here's your host, Dr. Ricky Singh. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Backstory. Recently, a few weeks ago, my roommate from college and his family visited us here in New York City, and he had actually recently been diagnosed with COVID and reported significant symptoms such as fatigue, overall body aches, decreased stamina, headaches. And the conversation surrounding his condition was really less about the severity of his illness, but really about his response to the virus. And this started us on a conversation. Now, it's not uncommon to hear about stories of a family that's been stricken by the common cold or the flu or any kind of bug. And while mom gets better and continues to take care of the family and take care of the sick kids, keeps the house clean and make sure everyone is medicated and drinking fluids, dad is often bedridden for days. So what's this about? Do men really complain more when they're sick? So I thought, you know, let's see what the science has to say regarding this condition known as man flu. So man flu is a term that is so ubiquitously used that it's actually been included in the Oxford and Cambridge Dictionary. And Oxford defines it as a cold or similar minor ailment as experienced by a man who is regarded as exaggerating the severity of the symptoms. But perhaps man flu is more than just a dismissive mocking term. What if there is merit? And what if males actually do experience sickness different than females. And while there's no generalized consensus on the disparities of the immune response between male and females, I think there are some valuable things that we should consider. First, let's talk about hormones. In a study conducted by Dr. Kyle Sue, who is based out of Canada, the research showed that female mice have a stronger immune system than male mice. And what the study concluded was around the functions of estrogen and testosterone in our bodies. Now, how a person responds and the symptoms one develops after getting exposed to the flu, influenza, coronavirus, or any virus in general, is really the interaction between the virus and your immune system. There are some studies that suggest that the higher levels of testosterone that are commonly found in males cause a more robust immune response and therefore might correlate with a heightened severity of symptoms. What's further compelling to support this data is that estrogen, which is commonly considered a female sex hormone, is also a very important hormone when it comes to the immune system as it boosts the immune response, which could be a reason why women tend to recover more quickly and it may even take the edge off some of the symptoms. So on one hand, you have the male hormone testosterone, which is suppressing the immune system. And on the other hand, estrogen, which is boosting the immune system. So this does suggest that sex hormone differences may play a role in how well the immune system can do its job. Another factor to consider is genetics and evolution. And according to a study done in 2010 at the University of Cambridge, males tend to be more prone to getting infected and less able to clear the infection. And what this study suggests is that these sex differences in immunity came out due to evolution, leading to lower resistance of infection in males. What we tend to see in healthcare is the discrepancy between male and female health behaviors. We know from looking at epidemiology that women tend to take better care of themselves. They tend to go to the doctor more than men. And that makes sense because if you wait longer to go to the doctor, your symptoms are likely to get worse and you couple that with some hormonal differences. So it's plausible that males will present with more severe symptoms due to both of these factors. So can we say definitively that there is a man flu? Do men actually overstate their symptoms when they get sick? I think there is more to this debate than just evolution and hormones. Because if you look at the statistics of epidemiology, you might also want to consider age. Yes, it's true that young men and men over 65 are hospitalized at a higher rate than women, 
But you must also look at females are hospitalized more during their reproductive years as they have a more severe reaction to viruses in general. It's also important to realize whether or not man flu exists in the first place. There are so many conditions that affect one sex differently than the other. For example, males are predisposed to getting diabetes and suffering from coronary artery disease. And if that's the case, perhaps there are different viruses that affect men differently than women. So my conclusion about man flu is that we probably need a better understanding of how the flu affects sexes differently because deeming male viral respiratory symptoms as exaggerated without rigorous scientific evidence could have important implications for men, including insufficient provision of care. So still more research needs to be done in this area because some of the studies included did not consider other factors like modifiable risk factors like smoking or preventative care visits like we mentioned before. And these factors can certainly affect people's overall health. Either way, no matter what's your sex, putting off a visit to the doctor does no one any good. So I hope this clarifies or at least sheds some light on whether men are wimps or just immunologically inferior. Please take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Until next time, this is The Backstory, and we've got your back. Thanks for listening to The Backstory. Please subscribe, rate the podcast, and review The Backstory on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Play Music. And feel free to share this podcast on social media or even your own website or blog. This podcast is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information is at the user's own risk. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice. To learn more about Dr. Singh and his clinical research, please follow him on social media. You can also sign up for his newsletter by going to www.rickysinghmd.com. That's R-I-C-K-Y-S-I-N-G-H-M-D dot com.